I'm calling the shots. Guess who be running the show? Fuck with me though, making me feel like the bad guy. What is up, guys? So in this video today, we'll go over some fuel pump setup, uh, fuel system configuration. These are the things that I think are our number one priority for a high horsepower application. I'm gonna go through and explain a lot of misinformation for set setting up and sizing a fuel pump. And uh, I'll go over pretty much what I have for my car, how you can apply this to your vehicle based on your power needs, and essentially how to size things properly instead of guessing. Uh, one of the most frustrating things for me as a tuner is I'll have a car and they say, oh, I've gone through the fuel system, I've done this, I've done that. And you'll see inadequate fuel filters. You'll see inadequate size of fuel pumps or quantity of fuel pumps. You'll see a fuel pressure regulator that's from China and a piece of shit. So we're gonna go over a few things here. We'll start with, first off, how to read and size a fuel pump. This is the thing that I see wrong almost every single time when someone says, my fuel pump can handle whatever power they say. That's bullshit. Let me explain. Okay, let's say you're going here. You want to be bougie. You want to be badass. You say, give me a brushless pump. Okay, cool. So go check out these pumps. Ooh, brushless. Ooh, big number. I personally own two of these guys. In-tank brushless twin screw pumps. These guys have a large pedestal that they sit on, and for me they wouldn't have worked in application. But you can see that it's 600 liters per hour at 45 PSI and 125 PSI max at 13.5 volts. Now, hopefully a lot of you guys have upgraded your alternator You're actually closer to 14.4. So it will flow more than this. Every electronic in the car will work better at 14.4 volts than it will at 13.5. Bottom line, that's how things work. And as a result, you're actually getting less amperage draw. Um, but this is a very critical number here, okay? This is a blow off valve inside. The 125 is a blow off inside the pump to where it doesn't overpressurize and damage the internals. This is a curve, which this pump does not have documented right here. However, this does. In fluid mechanics, you have fuel pumps and any other fluid device you have an inverse of flow versus pressure, okay? As you raise the pressure of the system, and that can be done in a few different ways, the total flow goes down. You see that? Okay, so let's say we start with a nominal pressure of 45 PSI, just like this one, 45 PSI. And we intend to run 25 pounds of boost. Well, the fuel pump is rated to flow, not at this number, not at 45, but now because you're actually at 25 pounds of boost, you're adding 25 to this. And this will be where your fuel pump is actually able to flow that amount of fuel. So, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 ends up at 70 pounds. Now, no fuel system is perfect, okay? You're going to have line losses. You're going to have the fuel heating. You're going to have certain things that create a restriction in the system. So now, let's just say as a very simple number, we'll add another 5 PSI on top of that. So now, even though you're rated for a 45 PSI base pressure, at 25 pounds of boost with the added 
of a line loss, you should be measuring your fuel system for 75 PSI. So for this one, the fuel pump uh, 4142 from Fuel Lab kicks out about 150 gallons an hour. If you've got two Bosch 044s, that's I think what this red line is right here, that's kicking out about 110 gallons per hour. Uh, the incredibly howling loud air motive is way down here at 70, 72. And what I want you guys to realize is the shaping of this curve. A lot of these are very nice linear taper. The aeromotive stuff of the older era. No, this is not their new brushless spur pump style. But their older era has a huge drop off before 90 PSI. Now, if I give you this an extreme example, the Bosch over 4 is very flat by contrast and the others are very much in this similar sort of curve here but this one drops up very quickly okay in an extreme example uh, a drag racing application you might be starting at 70 psi and you're adding 50 pounds of boost so your your pressure would now be 125 or where this thing would be wanting to blow off maximum pressure this pump would be down to damn near nothing. This pump is going to be following this trend very well out to 125, as will all the others. So it's very important to understand the design constraints and what you are choosing your pump for. Um, because you have your base pressure and then you're adding your boost to the actual fuel flow of that pump to get the actual fuel flow. There's an amazing page here, uh, 928.jorj7.com. And this guy actually goes through fuel calculations. I'm actually gonna save this page, it's fantastic. The dude put in the right amount of effort. He goes through all the calculations and uh, I'll link this in the video below in the description. So not a huge fan of his AN lines. This look jank. But this was from him, the, the photo I showed you guys earlier. And uh, Jesus, just horrid. So his actual building, terrible. But the calculations and how things work, he explains here how an in tank pump works, the tested pressures, the tested restrictions of lines, how things work for having two pumps in line. Um, Generally, you can get an idea of it's almost double with two pumps. Um, sometimes it's a little bit worse because you're gonna have a check valve and you're gonna have a little more in the system that restrict it further. So, if one pump's putting out 61 psi, or I'm sorry, 61 gallons an hour, and you double it, in his example, it actually went up, but generally it's gonna go down probably about five psi from doubling. Here, he covers line restrictions. So AN stuff is divisible by 16, right? So 616 is 6 AN, 3 eighths, right? This is the, <clears throat> let me take a step back. 8 AN is equivalent to half an inch, okay? Because eight over 16 is one half. Um, the, the, there's a little bit of discrepancy here in how he's doing this, but that's generally how things are sized out. So the velocity feet per second and friction loss going from a 6 AN is a 3.37 PSI in his example and at one PSI going to eight AN. So it's a very, very large difference. And then going from here, eight to 10 goes from that same distance again. It's three times uh, more efficient, which is amazing. So 
10 a.n. is 0.3 psi loss in his example compared to 1.1 compared to 3.4 so very very large differences size things accordingly for your system because again if you're calculating out these losses in your system i was saying five psi it's better to have um, better to have larger lines to get as much as you can from the pumps okay pumps that's way more than enough i think you guys can get the idea from that like i said i'll link this in here we talk about fuel systems and shit for, for hours so the most important thing for your fuel system is if you're using modern injectors which you should be that'd be anything ev14 um we would want to have a fuel filter so let me go back here to i personally don't have their fuel filters but they are very good um you want to have something that is filtering down below what your injector hats are trying to stop. So a modern injector, EV14, Bosch, Inject Dynamics, um, Deutschworks, Grams, um, Fuel Injector Clinic, those sorts of things, okay? EV14, US car style injectors, those guys need to have uh, something smaller than 10 micron filtering out uh, there which gets a visual because it's important filtering out their uh, fuel flow before getting to the injector this popped up okay so we've got a screen here really dumb thing but imagine you are trying to get as much filtered out of the system as possible and what is that doing exactly that's going to be creating a restriction of flow so you can go like this guy very very open okay this is like your 100 micron oem 40 micron filters think of it as a very coarse very large opening now compare it to what you want to run, and this is a great example, by the way. This is what your injector top hats up here would look like inside of the EV14 Bosch injectors. These things are rated for like seven micron. You can see how small the screen is, right? Now, you wanna have a filter ideally smaller than seven micron. So a lot of stuff in the market, which I think these are, um, are designed to be six micron there's 10 gallon per minute let's see what this one says 40 micron but this is a course you don't want to have a course for your final filter and your final filter should be right before the fuel rail and something that is n micron or below in the numbers and that makes it smaller and more granular on the uh, the protection stuff that I would recommend would be the Deutschworks uh, I think they make a seven inch fuel filter it goes down to six micron you've got the Inject Dynamics F750 six micron um, Radium Auto has one six micron all these are designed to be filtering to a point where it will not clog your injectors if you run something like a factory mazda fuel filter it will turn to this the top of the injector will get clogged you will have to clean your injectors and it will be the cause of a damaged engine because you can only program so much right not having adequate fuel filter can and will be the death of an engine. Um, and, you know, for all the guys on E85, you have to be taking your tank out. You have to be doing a treatment inside your gas tank that is able to handle E85. 
a factory steel tank has a very light little film on it and it will be eaten up by ethanol so anyone who's doing flex fuel you must be doing a tank treatment um, that I would say take it to a radiator shop have them boil it out they run chains through it they get everything that could have been rusty or terrible out and then it ends up looking much like this right it looks terrible it doesn't matter the idea is that this is a bonded to the steel tank material not like this dude who didn't prep properly but this bonded material is designed to handle let's see if I can find their actual website designed to handle all the ethanol you could ever throw at it so it'll say it on here oh, shoot I don't have this in front of me but these are amazing oh here it is right here STS here's the breakdown of what it contains yeah let's not go down this rabbit hole together this would be a terrible idea so <clears throat> the point is to make sure that your fuel system is not falling apart on itself so same thing goes with fuel lines if you're running uh any sort of ethanol you better be running ptfe uh a proper ptfe line otherwise that thing's going to dissipate and it's going to eat up the rubber and destroy your whole fuel system it, the, one of the most expensive things being you know your injectors and your fuel pumps and all that stuff are going to be jammed up with rubber and it's just such a simple thing to not make the mistake of. So hopefully this covers enough to get a lot of you out of the woods with uh, designing sizing, designing the fuel system, uh, making sure that your tank is coated for E85, making sure that you're using PTFE lines when needed, and sizing things accordingly. The larger you go, the less flow restriction you have per foot and therefore the more efficient the system is so that goes across the board it doesn't matter if joe blow runs dash six and you make 600 horsepower he's doing it but he's working harder to get there and if your fuel system is working less hard guess what now your temperature of the fuel is now lower as a result lower fuel temperature makes more power there you go plain and simple all right, y'all, I'll catch you in the next one. Hopefully this was helpful. Reach out if you have any questions or if you need me to design a fuel system for you, I'm more than happy to. Um, I do take a lot of time in this and I do try to make this as professional as possible when we're working together. So hopefully that helps and uh, cheers. See you in the next one. I know I'm calling the shots. Guess who be running the show? Fuck with me though, making me feel like the bad guy.